Hey, hello guys, this is Karthik from ExvilleAutomation.com and this is part 8 of our Android app automation with Robotium series. And in this part, we're going to talk about installing or referencing Robotium. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 7 since this part is going to be a continuation of that part. So referencing or installing Robotium. So as we already discussed in part 7, all we are going to do in Robotium is just reference the robotium.jar file in the Android test project. That's it. So you're not going to install Robotium as a QTP or Visual Studio or RanoRex or something like that. It's just a jar file. That's it. And you're going to just reference this jar file into your Android test project. So let's get started by jumping into Eclipse and see how things work. So I'm going to flip to Eclipse. So this is our Eclipse and this is our Android application which we developed in our previous videos of this video series in part 5 and part 6. So we are going to test this application, right? And I have my Android up and running here. So you can see that my Android is up and running right now, right? So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to create a Android test project. So for that, just hit file, new, and there is something called others. Just select that. And here in the Android, you have a project called Android test projects. So as you can see here in the Android test project, it is of type JUnit. So there is a symbol here, JU right so this icon represents is a j unit test project which means this project is actually built on the top of j unit right so i was just trying to mess up the android j unit test project and i was just trying to use a test ng kind of stuff to run multiple test methods in this particular project but it was showing me some errors and then I figured out that this Android test project is actually built on the top of JUnit. So if you use test ng test runner, then it's going to throw you some different kind of errors, right? So don't try to mess up those kind of things because I already figured out that it's not working. Maybe if you try to figure out in a different way, it's always a very good thing. Just share that to the community. It would be very, very helpful to other people as well. All right, so then I'm going to select this project and then I'm going to hit next. So it asks for the project name and you can give any project name. So I'm going to give this as calculator test project. All right, so which is great. Oh, what is it? There's an already file or directory name calculator test project. Hmm. Maybe calculator test is fine. And then I'm gonna hit next. And it asked me to choose the project which you're gonna write the test. So I'm gonna select the calculator, so which is the one I have already. And then I'm gonna hit next. And it's asking me for the target SDK. And I know that the target SDK is a PA level 19. So I'm gonna select that rather selecting the api level 18 and then i'm going to hit finish that's it so this will create a android test project for me in my eclipse that's it so it has created a project for me and this is the calculate test project and you can see that it has added a reference for the android 4.4.2 which is the api level 19 and also it has a resource folder as you can see here which is very similar to the resource folder which is available right here but there are some of the folders which are missing here of course because this is not a real application it is just a test project right and then what we're going to do right now is we are going to add a class file a actual JUnit test class file to this particular package. For doing that, just right click it and there is an option called new and J 
J unit test case. As you can see here, if you select this, this will show you a new J unit test case window. And here you can give the name of the test case, right? And here you can also see there are two versions of J unit. One is J unit three test, and another one is new J unit four test. But we're going to work with J unit three test case right now, right? So I'm going to select this option as it is, and then it is saying there is a package con.example.calculator.test. So it is automatically creating a package by default for me. So I'm going to leave it as it is for now. And then I'm going to give a name for this particular test case. And let's give a name, a very meaningful name. So let's say I'm going to add the two numbers in my calculator. So I'm going to give the name as add test case. All right. And then there is a superclass thing. So what is the superclass? So in superclass, we need to actually put the activity instrumentation, activity instrumentation. And if you hit browse, you can see that there is an activity instrumentation test case and an activity instrumentation test case too, right? So you can ask me what is these two classes? Actually, you can go to Google and just search for activity instrumentation test case 2. All right. And here, if you just go to this particular website, which is nothing but a developer.android.com website, you can see that this class provides functional testing of a single activity. So the activity under test will be created using the system infrastructure and you will then be able to manipulate your activity directly so you can also perform ui threat testing and also you can set the activity so this class is actually a replacement of activity instrumentation test case which is deprecated right so the one which you are seeing right now is deprecated so it is no longer in use so it is basically in a holistic picture activity instrumentation test case 2 is a class you need to add as a base class for your test so that you can call the activity which is written in your application. So your application has got different kinds of activity and we know that our application has got an activity called main activity. So we are going to implement that main activity into this activity instrumentation test case class and then we are going to pass all the request that we're going to make in our test to the activity directly. So basically, we are trying to make a linkage between your test project as well as your application under test, right? So I'm going to select OK here. And then it is saying which stub method you need to create. So I'm going to select setup. And then I'm going to hit finish here. All right. So this will create a simple test case for me. And you can see there are some of the errors here. As you can see, it says what well, the type of the parameter you're going to add for this. So actually, the type I'm going to add is my main activity. So this main activity is actually coming from my com.example.calculator, right? So what is this com.example.calculator? Again, this is coming from my com.example.calculator, which is nothing but my application under test, right? And then I'm going to just import this. And you can again ask me how this com.example.calculator.main activity is actually coming because we referenced this calculator project into our calculator test project right and then there is some errors coming for this constructor again yes this has to come it is saying that we need to add this constructor for this particular class so i'm going to so i'm going to add a constructor for this particular class and then let's replace this guy with the main activity dot class. All right, just hit save. So that's it.
and again you can ask me why this constructor is for and why are we doing all these things so we can discuss about this particular code in more detail in next video of this video series so that's it guys thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day